Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for blessing us, Lord, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Church said, amen. amen. Praise God. That's right. Clap for Jesus. Amen. All right. All right. Look at your name and say, get your Bible out. Amen. Get your Bible out. Okay. So uh, we've started this series here for uh, Wednesdays entitled the whole truth, the whole truth. And we're going to preach the whole truth. Part three tonight. The whole truth, part three, and the subtitle of tonight's message is faith is fearless. Amen. Amen. Faith is fearless. And, you know, we really have to emphasize some things like this because sometimes we can be confused. Sometimes we could say, well, I have faith in some things and other things. I'm a little more hesitant, but you've got to really get down to the truth of the matter and understand that faith and fear cannot coexist. Amen? Amen. Faith and fear cannot coexist. Faith will push fear out or fear will push faith out. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. I'll say that again. Faith will push fear out or fear will push faith out. They cannot coexist. And as followers of Jesus, how many of y'all understand that when you signed up for this, you became a follower of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What does that mean? A follower of Jesus. You're going to walk after Jesus. Amen. You're going to walk the steps that he has set before you. You're going to even follow the example. Y'all with me? Amen. That he has set for you. Now, do you guys ever recall Jesus being fearful in the scriptures? Even in the midst of the most adverse situations, Jesus never expressed fear. Why? Because he was full of faith. You have to be full of one or the other. You're going to be filled with fear or you're going to be filled with faith. You have to choose. And then you understand that God has given me the power to choose. And so as a result of the power I have to choose, I'm going to do what it takes so that now fear cannot contaminate my faith cannot cause me to do live at, in a way that is displeasing to God. As, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to live by faith. Now, what does the word live mean? You can visit a place. Amen. Come on. Any of you ever visited somewhere? Come on. Some places you visited weren't, you probably were glad you didn't live there, huh? I'm just saying anybody. Come on. I know I visited some places and I'm like, wow, I'm looking forward to getting back to the house. Amen. I, I'm, because I don't live over here. Amen. They do things a little bit different over here than what I'm used to. Amen. Well, you can visit a place, but you, when you live there, that's something different. And so he says, uh, or I'm saying here as, as God is speaking, as followers of Jesus, we are called to live by faith. And so that means uh, conduct our way. It, it's our way of being. This is just what we do. It's who we are. So let's go over to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to look at verse 38. We'll look at a couple of different versions of this. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 38. Now he says here. Now the just shall live by faith. Amen. You guys see that? Now the just shall live by faith. Now let's let's break this down. The just this means the justified, the righteous, the redeemed. That's us. Amen. And, and, and so we've been redeemed by Jesus. And now we're the just. Because we are justified by Jesus and what he has done for us. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 
Verse 39, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them to, that believe to the saving of the soul. And so let's break this down a little bit. Let's look in the Amplified uh, of this same, these same verses. He says, uh, the Amplified here, but the just, well, you know what? I, I want to just uh, actually go to verse 39, or excuse me, 38. We'll look at 38 and Amplify. But the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction respecting man's relationship to God and divine things and holy fervor born of faith and co-joined with it. And okay, so we are God's righteous servants. Amen. Okay. Teens, you guys can go ahead on over there. Praise God. We are God's righteous servants. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll get this together tonight. Amen. A little, a little off, but we get back on. Praise God. All right. So once again, we are God's righteous servants. Now, have you ever uh, looked at yourself as a righteous servant? Amen. Anybody say yes? No, maybe. Eh, I don't know. Pastor, that's kind of hard. A righteous servant. Well, that's when you're justified. That's what you become. You become his righteous servant. Now, let's flip over quickly and we'll come back. But go to 2 Corinthians 5, 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Just look at it in the King James quickly. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. You guys got that? And so Jesus became sin for us. Why? that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so he had to take on sin so that I could be made righteous. I am now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Look at your name and say, I am righteous now. Okay. And so you've got to get an understanding of this in order for you to progress the way God wants you to progress. I am now his righteous servant. Now let's flip back to our text in Hebrews 10, 38 in the Amplified. Hebrews 10, 38 in the Amplified. I am his righteous servant because I've been redeemed and Jesus has made me righteous. Now, but the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant, look at your name and say, that's me. Okay. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction respecting man's relationship. Okay. Now look at your name and say, are you in relationship with God? And we can't just be knowing of God and talking about God and, and, and God is there somewhere. No, we have to have a relationship, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. And so we know that God has some divine things in store for us, but it's going to be my faith that allows me to access that. But I've got to understand I'm his righteous servant. And so now I'm not looking to God to punish me anymore. Amen. God is not looking to come and chastise me. God is looking to bless me. But he wants me to keep my relationship in its right status and right standing. Amen. I've got to respect my relationship with God. And I've got to understand I'm now righteous. He's righteous. And so we can communicate. How I many know it's a good thing when you don't have to hide from God anymore? When you can walk through your life and you can just be open to hear God speak to you no matter where you are. It doesn't matter. I mean, you, you're just happy because you're in fellowship with God. When you're hiding from God, now you have stepped out of your position, the position that I've already shared with you that was paid for by Jesus. Jesus paid. He took on sin, even though he knew no sin, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Well, if I'm made righteous, now I'm in right standing with God. Now I have a good relationship. Amen. How many know when relationships are not right, you need to fix them. Well, when you fix them, doesn't that feel much better? When, when relationships are fixed. Amen. Well, Jesus fixed that so that now we can have a right relationship with God. And now we, his righteous servants, those that are justified, we can now live by faith. Amen. We can now live by faith. Now let's put this up. I know I'm flipping back and forth, but let's put this back up. These two verses in the, um, 
I want to see it in the King James again. See it in the King James. And so he says, now read it again. Now the just shall live by faith. Now we know that that's us, but this next part I want to focus on. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And so if any man draw back, if any man draw back. Now what this means is, is you're stepping forward, you're moving forward, but then all of a sudden you draw back. Amen. You draw back and faith will get you to start going in the right direction. But if you're not careful, fear will step in there and it'll cause you to draw back. I, I think it maybe tried in the NLT, maybe in the NLT. I'm just trying to find an extra scripture here. I thought I had it earlier, but uh, the NLT, I'm looking for this. Uh, let's see. My righteous ones who live by faith. Okay. Uh, maybe the NIV. I don't know. I want to see it. One of them talks about shrinking back, but. If we don't find it, that's okay. I'll just continue on. NIV. NIV. There it is. Okay. And so he says, and, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Amen. Shrinks back. That's almost like cowering down. Amen. That's almost like starting out bold and excited. Come on somebody. But then you run into some opposition. So what do you do with that opposition? That opposition causes you to cower down. That's why you have to understand that faith and fear don't mix. Because if you started out in faith and if it's real faith, come on, somebody, you're going to stay in faith. I'll give you two examples. Peter started out in faith, right? What we thought was faith. But then guess what? Peter started walking on the water. But as soon as he paid attention to his circumstances, as soon as he come on, somebody that's like, you know, you start out doing something for God. You start out living for God. But then all of a sudden you pay attention to your circumstances. Well, if it's not real rock solid faith, you'll shrink back. Well, Peter started to pay attention to his surroundings. And as a result of that, what happened to his faith? It stopped working. Immediately. Come on, you don't have to raise your hand, but I, I, I know many of us have been there in our lives where we started out really good, like really believe in God and our faith was high. But then we kind of. Anybody with me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Anybody with me? We started to shrink back a little bit. Well, what is that? See, and that's why we come to church. We want to be helped, right? Because I start out and Peter started out. But then guess what? He paid attention. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Come on. The evidence of things not seen. And so if you start paying attention too much to what you see, then guess what? That can cause fear to come alive. And then now you shrink back. Give you another example in comparison to Peter. David. Y'all remember David in 1 Samuel 17? David started out in faith. And finished the whole thing in faith. Come on, somebody. He ran at the opposition. So how is this possible? How can one see Jesus, walk towards him, but then all of a sudden turn and look and his faith just completely stops working? Well, how did the other one, not only did he run at his adversary, but he took him out. In that story, it never, it never says anything about David retreating because faith has no reverse. I mean, it doesn't, if you're really shot out there in faith, there is no reverse. There is no retreating. There is a, a pressing until you complete, until you accomplish that which God has set, sent you out there to accomplish. Amen. And so if we're understanding this, if anyone shrinks back, now God's not pleased. So why is, what is this? Why is God not pleased? Because without faith, hmm? see, now we think about this scripture here. If anybody, you know, shrinks back or turns back, sometimes it's, we think about them turning back to sin. But if you're starting out, if you're supposed to live by faith, a lot of times when people don't live by faith and they allow fear to 
come in, the next thing that will follow will be sin. Because they start to return back to things. Come on, somebody. They start to return back to things that they used to know. They used to be comfortable, their own ways of doing things. And so God is not pleased. If anyone shrinks back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Now, we've got to understand something. New identity brings new responsibility. I have a responsibility now to live by faith. I have a responsibility not to entertain faith or be excited about the idea of faith. No, I have to live this way. This has to be my new normal. Amen. Now let's go to Hebrews 11. 1. We know this, but let's look at it and break it down tonight. Amen. Okay, so now faith. So we understand that faith is something that you have to have now, right? We get this. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being proof of the things we do not see, and the conviction. Next verse, please. Or next part. Let's see. And the conviction of their reality. Um, faith perceiving as real fact what is not perceived or what is not re, uh, revealed to the senses. So let's think about this. This is faith and faith in action. If we can understand that, just back to the David story, David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, if we can understand that David is pursuing this giant who everyone else is afraid of, maybe he saw something, amen? Maybe he saw something that wasn't revealed to his senses. Maybe there was something on the inside of him that let him know that God, come on somebody, will not fail him. And you know what will help your faith is you have to develop faith experiences. You have to have some faith Markers, some faith experiences in your life. That's why I was talking about earlier the evidence. You have to have something. Anybody here, they can say, you know, I, I, God got me through this or that, and it was by faith. You know what I mean? Anybody here to where you said, you know what, I had to take some steps. I had to step out there, and I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And at first, I was a little nervous, but then I just did it. And guess what? God worked it out. Well, that's what helped David. Amen. Because what did David tell his brothers when he went up there? They're all scared and they're saying, oh, man, this guy is, is, this is the toughest guy you've ever seen. And then guess what? Even the king tried to tell David he can't do it. But David had experience, what? From his relationship. He had time spent with God and he saw God show up for him. And so what did he do? He recalled, come on somebody, he recalled the last time. He recalled the lion and he recalled the bear. And he said, well, you know, this person here is no different. What about us in our lives as we're walking forth and God is telling us to go forward to do something great. The enemy is trying to creep up in there and allow fear to grab a hold of you and cause you to shrink back. But then what if you recall? What if you recall the last time? What if you were to tell the enemy, well, you know what? The, the same God that got me through this last situation he has not retired. He is still on the job. He is still in charge of my life. So guess what? I'm not going to shrink back. I'm not going to waste time. I'm going to press forward because I know God has greater things. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. See, the evidence of things not seen. You've got to be looking forward to some things. Now, faith promotes actions. Amen. Amen. Faith promotes actions that are rooted in trust. Boy, I'm just breaking it down on a Wednesday for you guys. Faith promotes actions that are rooted in trust. Man, if I trust God, I'll do what God said. Amen. I'll do what God said, even if it doesn't make sense. Come on, somebody, even if it doesn't make sense and God says going to do this. And, and for you and your understanding, you might say, well, Lord, that, uh, woo. And that's why it says Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. And so faith promotes actions 
that are rooted in trust. Faith has no reverse. Amen. Faith has no reverse. Peter was not allowed to turn around and walk back into the boat. Amen. He started out walking on water, going towards Jesus. He would have continued. But he started looking around and what happened immediately, he began to sink. He couldn't turn around and walk back to the boat because walking on water was a faith act. Sinking is a fear act. Amen. And so if you got to understand faith has no reverse. And here's another thing. Faith has no regret. Faith has no reverse and faith has no regret. If you started out doing something in faith and you know it was God, then guess what? There's not going to be any reverse and there's not going to be any regret. The enemy will try to trick you and say, I don't know if you made the right decision. I don't know if this is what you're supposed to be doing. But if you know it was by faith, then you can shut him up every time. Because you realize that there is no turning back. I won't stop until I complete my assignment. There is nowhere else for me to go. There's nothing else for me to do. Uh, I have burned down the bridge. Amen. When you burn down the bridge, what does that mean? It's only forward. There is no going backwards. And this is the way faith works. And this is what we've got to understand as a people. Faith has no reverse and no regret. Faith is active. I'm giving you guys some nuggets so you can evaluate yourself. So you can make sure now uh, you don't have to turn there. But we already know Hebrews eleven six. 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. We already know this. And so let us analyze whether or not we're walking by faith, whether or not we're truly living by faith. Lord, help me and show me and bring it to my attention on a day to day basis. Well, if I'm, I'm living by faith, faith is active. Faith is active, causing us to move forward. It's active and causing you to move forward. Never becoming stagnant or complacent. If you become stagnant or complacent, you're not in faith. Amen. Amen. You're not in faith. If you arrived at, at that comfortable place of life and, and you're not aspiring to grow and to do better, I don't care where you are in your life, if you've gotten uh, a tremendous amount of success or if, or if you just started or whatever, you have to still always aspire to be better. If you're not, that's not faith. You're not pleasing God. Now, fear is the ex exact opposite. Fear will always cause regression. Amen. Fear will cause regression. Which will lead to decay. And so what does that mean? Now you don't have to raise your hand. But I've, I've met a lot of people man. That used to be. Moving and shaking for God. Used to be passionate. Used to be fiery about this thing. But they're not anymore. What happened? They, they become complacent. They were looking forward. Come on, had ideas and thinking about what we can do next. And oh, man. And, and, and it's just an excitement when it come on, somebody, when it comes to the kingdom, just in the talk, in the conversation. I mean, I love that about my pastor. He's just so excited. He's always excited about just ministering to people. And he's in India right now. And he's, you know, he's just still getting on the Facebook, doing the prayers. But he's just excited. He's always just, man. Because he's full of faith. Amen. He has never arrived. After all these years of preaching. He has never arrived. And none of us are, are supposed to ever arrive. If faith is our driver. If faith is, is what is leading us. Then there should be an excitement. There should be a fresh attitude all the time. There should be a fresh attitude with anything that you get to do for God. You ought to be always looking forward like, man, I'm looking forward to how we can improve this or how it can get better. I'm just looking forward. I'm looking forward. I'm not stagnant or complacent. If I get stagnant, if I become comfortable, if I fall into that 
comfortable church groove. That's a dangerous place to be. That's a dangerous place to be. Because now you're not open for growth. You're not open for God to stretch you. For God to pull you. For God to take you out of your comfort zone. For God to get you to do some things that maybe you don't have all the answers yet. To take some chances and to, you know what I'm saying? If you're not there, your faith is not really working. It's not driving you. And so we have to understand that fear could be creeping in. Now, there's another indicator. If you find yourself thinking about returning to things of old, this just just this is not just like returning to sin, but I'm talking about there's new challenges ahead, but yet you keep thinking about old, comfortable stuff that you know and going back to what you know instead of trusting God for this, this big horizon in front of you. If you find yourself thinking about returning to things of old or, or finding an easier way. Anybody here with me? You know, because sometimes faith is not the easiest way. In, in most cases, it's the hardest way because it's the way that makes no sense. It's the way that does not line up. It just doesn't add up. It doesn't compute. And so it's the hardest way. But if you find yourself looking for an easier way, then guess what? Or, let me add to this, planning as if what you were believing God for doesn't happen. So what does that mean? So you have alternate plans. So you started out in faith. And so your faith plans were big. Amen. Your faith plans were big. Your faith plans were even somewhat of a challenge. But if you find yourself planning. And you have a, a, a course of action set up just in case. What my faith stuff doesn't happen. Anybody here with me? Hmm. So what is that? So that right there, if, if, if you find yourself doing those things, then fear is on the rise. That's what it is. Fear is on the rise. Remember, faith and fear, they do not get along. So if I had these plans of faith at one time, but now all of a sudden I got a new plan. And my new plan is a just in case my Faith plan didn't work anyway. That's a fear based plan. Amen. That's going to be a plan that might be easier. And it might make sense. You may be able to apply some logic to it. Even you may be able to chart it out. But at the end of it will be sorrow. Because it wasn't God's best. The only way for us to get God's best for our lives is, is by faith. Anything else is, is not going to be good. It won't be satisfactory to us at all. And so we've got to understand this. Now, God doesn't want fear to be in you at all. The world says a little bit of fear is good. Well, the Bible says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Amen. So um, you may want to look at that as like somebody says, well, a little cyanide in your water is OK. Not mine. And so we need to be a people that are living free of fear. In fact, fearless and, and having a fearless boldness and just understanding that. God is is protecting me and God. I mean, I, I know I've been going back to that, but I, I just love David when he started out like that. You know, of course, he had his his troubles along the way. But when he started out young like that, he didn't know no better. That's like some of us. Hey, man, we were just young in the faith. We didn't know no better. We just, you know, you just believe, oh, God can do anything. Let's I mean, wow. You found, I mean, sometimes if you if we were able to listen to our conversations that we used to have when we really first started believing God. Before we got all logical and intellectual and, and, and realistic. We would probably be like, wow. 
That's the way David was. David was radical with this thing. Then later on, you know, he, he started going through his own problems and start doubting God, start, you know, saying stuff like, where are you, Lord? You know, <laughs> but it's the same one who had all that confidence. But what happened? Life circumstances. Now, part of that was through his disobedience. You know, you disobey God, then guess what? Your relationship is challenged. And the faith that you had before. See, you, you can't have strong faith if you keep on messing up because you keep messing up. You're, you're waiting on God to check you. That's what you're doing. I mean, it's like a kid that does wrong at the house. They know the whooping's coming. They, they just don't know when. They're like, uh, is it going down tonight? Oh. So they can't just freely live in that thing. You know what I mean? But when you're in right standing and you just keep doing what you're supposed to do, living under the blood of Jesus, then guess what? Your faith can thrive. So 2 Timothy, go to 2 Timothy. We know this scripture, but we're just going to get some review on it. Second Timothy 1 7 for God has not given us the spirit. Y'all see that? The spirit. So fear is actually a spirit sent from hell to destroy your life. To cause you to abandon your kingdom assignment to keep you out of the perfect will of God. Fear will even uh, push you right into that permissive will of God. And the permissive will is, you know what? God didn't shut the door on it, so it must be God. No. Just because he let you do it doesn't mean he directed you to do it. There's a difference. If God, I just ended up somewhere and God didn't stop me. Or no, I'm only here because God directed me. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. Not allowed. And so fear will allow you to step right into the permissive will of God. And so you'll take option B. Well, Lord, I mean, that this sounds good. But God may say, well, what was option A? And where did you get option A from? Hmm. Now, who came up with option B? Yeah. And so we, we get to working on that option B and we're talking about, well, Lord, I mean, I'm just saying, is this your will? And, and we already know option A is the one he wants for you, but that's going to take some time. That's going to take some faith. That's going to take some continuing to press even through adversity. Sometimes you have to go through a little adversity to be prepared for the next level. Because some people want to be on the next level, but God knows they're not ready yet. And he says, if I put you there, you're going to mess it all up. And so you have to have some more wilderness time because in the wilderness, it seems like me and you talk a lot. In the wilderness, it seems like I have your full attention, your undivided attention. So let me spend a little more time with you out there in the wilderness. Amen. But here we are. Well, but it's taking too long. Option B. Well, you need to recognize the value of the wilderness and do what you're supposed to do in it. Commune with God. Build your relationship with God. Get stronger. Hear his voice because I guarantee you, if you learn to hear his voice through the tough times, and guess what? When you get up there and things are going well, you will still hear his voice. But see, if people don't learn how to hear his voice in the tough times of life, then now if things change, if they take a shortcut, man, they're surely not going to hear him. And God's going to be yelling, telling you, don't do that. But you won't hear because temporary success has clogged your ears. Man's shortcut has blinded you. And now... You're set up for failure. Amen? 
But if I'm living now, if I'm the just, I've been justified, I've been redeemed. That means this is who I am. This is the way I conduct myself. This is the way I live. Then I live by faith. Then what does this mean? I have to live in the complete absence or with the complete absence of fear. There is no fear. That's okay. Except for the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is a reverential fear. It's not any kind of a fear that we have. We can't even relate that fear to anything in the earth. Amen. And so fear is, is always that preparation for the bad or the meditation of the bad. Uh, you know, the acronym of fear, false evidence appearing real. And the enemy wants you to make decisions out of fear. But God doesn't even want fear to exist within you. For God's not given us the spirit of fear, but one of power, love, right? I'll tell you, talk to you about this love in a minute, but power, love, and of a sound mind. So this is what God gives you. But now look at the, the way the scripture is written out. He has not given us the spirit of fear. So now we know that fear has nothing to do with these next things mentioned. Amen. So how many know there is no power in fear? Y'all seeing this tonight? How many know that there is no love in fear? How many know that there is not a soundness of mind in fear? See, so those things do not exist in fear. So God is not giving you the spirit of fear. But so what does that do? That cancels out what preceded it, right? But what he has given you instead. So you can't say a little bit of fear is good to have. Because instead of fear, God gave you this instead. Amen. And so instead of fear, he gave me power. Instead of fear, he gave me love. Instead of fear, he gave me a sound mind. Y'all see that? See how that works? And that's why you've got to know the whole truth. You've got to understand the truth of the Bible and be careful to not allow yourself to slip into things and to slip into um, shortcuts and just different things like that. Amen. Because we don't want fear to be in us, but fear definitely can't be your motivator. Fear definitely can't be your motivator. Amen. We don't make fear based decisions. Anybody here with me? We don't make fear based decisions. We make faith based decisions. Now you cannot allow fear to be your motivator. I'm just paraphrasing some of this for, for the sake of time, but you know, um, in the gospels, y'all remember the, 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 um, the parable, you know, the, the parable of the talents. I don't have time to look it up right now, but you know, the, the, the one, you know, he gave them however many, and then he, everybody multiplied it except for that one, that one guy, he said, you know what, uh, what did you do with your talent? Well, I buried it because basically I was afraid. So he didn't want to lose it. See what I'm saying? And so he made a fear based decision. And, and God is saying, what did you do with the talent that I gave you? Well, he wants you to multiply it. But that one servant was afraid. And so he buried it. And so guess what? He got his taken away. And so when you make fear based decisions, you lose in the end. You lose in the end because what you compromise to keep, you surely will lose it. And God will not be pleased. God is not happy. Amen. And so God doesn't want us making fear based decisions. You know, some people have decided they, they've made these decisions. They've made decisions uh, life decisions and they have been fear influenced decisions those never pan out those never pan out you can't do stuff based on the logical explanation you can come up with you have to do what god says and remember with god sometimes it doesn't make sense but as long as it's what he's telling you to do if you take out, you know, you go forward in faith then you can expect a good result. You can expect a good harvest. Amen. But if I allow fear to stop me, then 
All I have to look forward to is the results that fear can bring. Which is not going to be good. It's going to be the opposite of faith. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4.18. So he does not want fear in you anywhere. Amen. Fear should have nothing to do with you. So there is no fear in love. I said we'll talk about love in a minute, right? There is no fear in love. But perfect love, what kind of love does God give you? I mean, this love right here is, is perfect. This love is unconditional. This love is beyond your mess ups or mistakes or it's beyond your ability to earn anything. This is a perfect love because God, before you ever hit the world, he already knew you. Man, he already loved you. You were already special to him. So there was nothing that you had to do to earn this. This is something that he freely gave. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Why must fear be cast out? Here it is. Because fear hath torment. Man, fear will keep you up at night. Fear will have you running scenarios over and over and over and over and over again until you become mentally drained. Fear will cause you to speculate. Fear will cause you to expect things. You will expect, instead of expecting good news, you will expect bad news. Come on, somebody. If a phone call comes in, instead of expecting good news, you will expect bad news because fear has shaped you and now it is dictating your future. And this is why God says in his word, perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth, see this, is not made perfect in love. If you're bound up in fear, you just don't know how much God loves you. You just don't know how much God loves you. Because if God loves me and he cares about me, how I many know he's got this? So I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to have any fear whatsoever existing anywhere within me. Not a little bit. Sometimes today people make jokes about it and they say, well, you know, I have a fear of heights. That's not good. Well, I have a fear of spiders. Man, when I took my family to Costa Rica, man, my kids, they were jumping all around, man. We were in the jungle, so there were some different kind of bugs. But how many know we have authority over everything? I mean, really, it doesn't matter where I'm at. You know what I mean? But if you think about this now, this is not to come down on anybody because some people today are scared of the dark. You know, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, but I want to help you get a revelation because faith and fear cannot exist together. You cannot say I have faith over here for this, but yet I got to sleep with the lights on tonight because I'm. Huh? Which one? What, what are you? Are you being like David? Are you being like Peter? Which one are you going to be? Oh, well, you know, like on certain things, Pastor, I'm like David. Then on some other things, I'm like Peter. No, you can't be both. Y'all getting this? If fear has to be cast out. And I'm supposed to live by faith. How can, if, if it's supposed to be cast out, then how can I still have it? If it's supposed to be cast out. So if I'm having things going on in my head and I'm starting to think about possible outcomes that could be negative and all this stuff and it's bringing on this anxiety. A lot of people deal with all this stuff. Well, this stuff is fear driven. Well, we just got to address it for what it is and not allow it to or deceive ourselves into thinking that it can it can coexist with our faith i either trust them or i don't well no 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 pastor i trust him i trust him with my family but i don't trust him with my money 
or I trust him with my money and I don't trust him with my family. Either you trust him or you don't. You see what I'm saying? Either, listen, fear causes people to disobey God. They just won't do what God said because they're afraid. But he says, perfect love casts out fear. So he that fears is not made perfect in love. You just got to get a revelation of how much God loves you. If he loved you enough to save you from a sinner's hell, come on somebody, he loves you more than enough to fix your problems. But that's a revelation that I've got to get. I've got to get that. I've got to understand that. I can live fearlessly. I don't have to be afraid of nothing. Because perfect love casts out fear. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And now this, the reason this is so important and we must teach it is, you know, your, your, your faith is going to work by love. Did you know that? Faith is going to work by love. And so if you've got this fear going on in your life, then you're not made perfect or you're not, uh, he the fear is not made perfect in love. Well, if that love is not working, then what about your faith? What's your faith doing? Let's go to Galatians 5, 6. Galatians 5, 6. So we just got to see these things so that we can just lay it out and be simple. Now, Sometimes people think the, the amount of religious things they do is pleasing to God. And you know what? Um, I don't wear shorts anymore. I don't wear uh, pants or whatever. You can make it up. You know what I mean? I don't wear makeup. I don't wear whatever. They got all these religious things. You know, I, I'm, I don't uh, do this and then a lot of people are even even in today's times there's this whole movement of all these people being caught up on the sabbath and and jesus says i'm the lord of the sabbath and so you've got even people today they well i can't go to church on sunday they're trying to keep all these laws that god is above and jesus has given us power over that so what he's saying here is for in jesus christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision now let me just explain this this circumcision deals with the religious elect. And so in the biblical times, the, the Old Testament times, that identified you as being a part of the uh, Abrahamic covenant, if you will. Circumcised on the eighth day and all that kind of stuff. Well, that was a religious practice. But now once Jesus has come, the, those religious ordinances are no longer valid. Amen. And so what does he say here? It does not really matter. Whatever religious practice you have, it, that's not going to matter because what matters is faith, which works by love. That's what matters today. That's what matters for all of us is faith. I mean, no, I've already said this, but Hebrews eleven six. without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what if I was circumcised on the eighth day? God is saying, I, I don't care nothing about that. Even Paul said it. Paul said, you know what? Man, if, if we're talking about qualifications, I got a lot of them. I've done a lot and, and I would be considered a religious elect, a Pharisee among Pharisees. But he, he basically let us know that all oh, that means nothing now. So here we are today and none of that religious practice means anything. Somebody could send them and say, I'm a devout Baptist. Jesus says, I don't care. I'm a this, I'm a that. He don't care. What he cares about now is faith. Y'all with me? Which works by. That's what matters more than you keeping all this religious doctrine. Where's your faith? That's what Jesus wants to know. Where's your faith? Amen. Faith, which works by love. But if I have not been made perfect in love, then what's my faith doing? See, I'm just making this real simple. Faith works by love. But if I have fear, well, we just looked at 1 John 4, 18. 
he that has fear has not been made perfect. Isn't that what it says? Am I getting too deep on you guys? I don't want to be flipping back, but let's just make sure we get this. So now we're looking at faith. That's all that matters. Y'all get this. Your religious background don't mean nothing. It's just faith now. That's all Jesus cares about. Okay. Which works by love. And then now we go back to 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And so now if I have fear, then I'm lacking a revelation of the perfect love that God has for me. And so if I'm in that place, then I need to correct that because guess what? I cannot walk by faith. He said, we started this whole message talking about the just shall live by faith. Well, how can I live by faith if I have fear in there? Y'all seeing this? So do you see how faith and fear cannot coexist? That we cannot tolerate that? Amen. I, I heard uh, I heard somebody say uh, faith. What is it? No fear tolerated is faith contaminated. But, you, you know, you can't you can't allow this. So so we've got to recognize these things. OK, Lord, reveal to me because are uh, there some areas of my life where maybe fear might be popping up in there. If you find yourself speculating and wondering instead of thinking the best. If you find yourself kind of girding up and preparing for what you don't want, that could be fear. So if that's fear, what are you going to do about it now that you know that your faith cannot work? And are you going to spend time not pleasing God? Or are you going to say, oh, no, no. He said fear has to be cast out. So I'm going to cast it out. And so God wants us walking with a boldness, a holy boldness in the earth. And he wants us to be able to move forward without second guessing. Amen. He wants us to move forward without all this pondering. And then we just kind of what if, well, how about we just get some stuff in faith? You know what? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Amen. So let me get enough word of God on it. So that now I can start developing some faith. What does God have to say about my future? What does God have to say about uh, my own personal finances? What does God have to say about my health? Let me just build up some. Come on. Let me get some word on this. So that now I can develop some faith. And so now I won't consider anything other than this. Wouldn't that be awesome if you arrived at this place in your life where you say, well, if it doesn't say it here, I don't believe it. Huh? Wouldn't that be awesome if you were there in your life where you just say, well, uh, if it doesn't say it in the Bible, I don't believe it. So somebody says you're sick, but you say, I don't believe it. <laughs> they will look at you like you're crazy. And they say, you're sick. You say, I don't believe it. Well, what do you mean? I don't believe it. I, I don't believe it. I, I, all I believe is by a stripes I'm healed. I'm sorry. That's all I believe. That's as far as my belief goes. Now we in here, we would say, man, you know, that's just kind of, but you, can you, can you see how the world has kind of crept in on our lives and started to, you know, condition us to accept some stuff that, that, you know what I mean? They didn't have to start believing stuff we don't believe in. We just start accepting it and we just kind of start going along with it. And what do they do? They, that's how they get you going on stuff. They push fear. They push fear. They push fear. Uh, they do this a lot of times when they want you to buy something. They push fear. Oh, you better get it now because it ain't going to be here. You're going to miss out. You better get Oh, you better. You know what? You better do it now. If God didn't tell you to do it, don't do it. Right. And if and if that thing is gone, then guess what? You weren't supposed to have it. That's like somebody say, you better marry me now. Because uh, then you might be like, well, thanks for the warning. <laughs> 
You mess around and jump into something you don't want to be in. You see what I'm saying? Faith will direct us into the perfect will of God. That way we don't settle for the permissive. Only the perfect. Well, guess what? If it's the perfect will of God, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Amen. And it's worth waiting for God's best. I'll just leave you guys with that. This what you know, for me as a pastor and, and you as coming here, I mean, even for word of life, it's worth us just, you know, waiting on God's best. I mean, it's, it's worth it for us to just keep believing and to keep going forward instead of, you know, taking some side trail somewhere that could end us up in a place that later we regret. Amen. Faith has no reverse. Faith has no regret. It's always going to cause us to push forward. So let's make sure that faith is what's operating in our lives and not fear. And, and don't try to make excuses. Now, I know I kind of touched on some, you know, little phobias and all that. And I'm not trying to be mean to anybody, but hey, overcome those things. You know what I'm saying? If you're scared of the dark, just go outside at nighttime. Just go out there. I just go out there without a light. I know you can do it. <laughs> just run down the street. <laughs> Stay on the sidewalk, though. I'm just kidding. But you've got to conquer those things. Don't allow those things to continue. Amen. You got, the, you got the victory in Jesus. You are more than a conqueror. And you can expect the greater things to start to manifest in your life. But remember, God's best is only going to come to you through faith. And in order for your faith to work, you've got to have a revelation of how much love, love God has for you. How much God really does love you. And that love is so strong that it casts fear out. And now you can live fearlessly. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap tonight. <laughs> Praise God. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's close in prayer tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for blessing us. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for releasing it in this place. Lord, we make a pledge to you now that we're going to Step into this faith in such a way, Lord, that fear has no chance against us. We're not going to be hindered or limited by fear. We're not going to make decisions based on fear. We're going to walk by faith with every day that you give us, Lord. And we know the best is truly yet ahead for us and our families. We praise you and we honor you. And we thank you. Maybe you're watching us right now. You don't know Jesus as Lord. Maybe the enemy has been tricking you and lying to you. And maybe there's even fear that could be holding you back. Well, what if I choose Jesus? What's going to happen? Well, step away from that fear. Allow God's overflowing love to consume you. And take that step. That step of faith to receive Jesus as Lord. It'll be the best thing that you could have ever done. Things are going to get better for you. There's a wonderful, bright future out there for you. And you can only access that through faith. But you must say yes to Jesus. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message, no matter where they are, they will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day... I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Let's get ready to step out into this power. No more fear in any area. Amen. This is one of those things we need to be mindful of. If you find thoughts coming in, creeping in, and if those thoughts are not uh, pleasant, if they don't have a good outcome, they don't have you meditating on what God can do and the goodness of God, if they, if they have you speculating on some what if, y'all been there, come on with the what ifs. If, if, if you start to meditate that what if, you got to stop right there and say, no, no, I cast that fear out right now. God's best is what's happening for me. That's all I receive. I don't, that's all I believe in. We can put that into play. I mean, we can just practice. I, nope, I don't believe in that. All I believe in is God's best. 
and God's best will show up. And we'll be having uh, wonderful testimonies. Amen. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for tonight. We thank you for releasing your word. We receive it. We embrace it. And we allow it to transform us from the inside out. As we leave this place, go with us, Lord, and continue to minister to us in a very personal way. We ask, Lord, that you would also continue to surround us with favor as with a shield. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.